assassination, puppet kings, and powerful kingmakers. These were only some of the characteristics of the Ethiopian time period that historians call Zamana Masafent, or the era of princes. What happened in this chaotic time, and what were the reasons that created it? That's what we'll cover in this episode of Humble History. Let's get into it right now. The period of Zamana Masafent, or the era of princes, began in 1769. Historians chose this date because it was in that year that a northern prince called Ras Mikael Sahul killed the sitting emperor Iyas and replaced him with a puppet king, that was Emperor Johannes II. However, Johannes' reign did not even last a year. Ras Mikael Sahul deposed him as well, replacing him with Takla Haimanut II. The era of princes was marked with the dominion of regional lords from different parts of the Ethiopian Christian kingdom. The constant making and unmaking of kings was one of the characteristics of this era that caused the power of the emperor to be greatly diminished and undermined by the power of regional lords. The emperor of the 1830s and the 40s, for instance, had almost no army of his own. His disposable wealth was believed to have amounted to 300 Maria Teresa silver dollars that was the Austrian currency used in Ethiopia at the time. Meanwhile, individual nobles such as Ras Welda Silasi and the self-proclaimed king Sahala Silasi had 75,000 and 80,000 dollars, respectively. The Ethiopian kings claimed descent from the legendary Queen of Sheba and King Solomon. Although there is no evidence to back this claim, this was the story believed by the general public since 1270, enabling Ethiopian kings to legitimize their rule. Even though elites such as Ras Mikhail Sahul had tremendous power, they never claimed the throne because they did not fit into this narrative. Instead, they placed puppet kings who were from the royal dynasty and ruled their regents. Ras Mikhail ruled as the regent with the title of Ras Petua dead for nearly a decade before he was removed by another lord, Ali Gwangul, who was later known as Ras Ali I. Ras Ali I followed in Ras Mikhail's example and never ascended to the throne. Ras Ali's rise created what was later called the Yejudan, a dynasty of powerful warlords who were de facto rulers of the country for most of the era of princes. After Ras Ali's death, six members of his family succeeded him as Ras, which is the Ethiopian equivalent of Duke. The peak of the dynasty was during the rule of Ali's nephew, Ras Guksa Mersu, who founded the city of Debra Tabor and used it as his administrative capital. The next major Yeju ruler was Guksa's grandson, Ras Ali II. Ras Ali II was only 13 when a Yeju council appointed him as the next leader of the dynasty. His mother, Menen, ruled as his regent, but Ali took power when he became old enough placing his mother as the wife of the puppet king Johannes III. Although the Yeju lords controlled the capital Gondar, different regional lords were consolidating their own powers as well. We see this particularly in the regions of Gojam and Shawa. Further south, Shawa was virtually unaffected by the war and politics of the capital. They enriched themselves by expanding south of their territory. The Shah nobles slowly but surely feeling emboldened took on more and more titles until Shah leaders like Sala Selassie took the title of king. This is not the same as the title of emperor or Negusa Negus, which literally translates to king of kings, but nonetheless taking the title of king was not done by any other regional lord. The era of princes was also marked with religious splinters in Ethiopian Orthodox Church. There were three doctrines vying for dominance. The group that claimed to have the established belief called themselves Tawahadu, meaning union. The variations of the doctrine called themselves the Kawat, meaning the unction. And yes, a Galij meaning son of grace. This division in religion only worsened the power struggle as different regional lords supported different doctrines. Yes, Agalij was supported by the Gondar lords. Kabat was supported by the lords in Gojam. 
and Tawado by the Tigrayan nobles. During the era of princes, one of the reasons that so many regional lords easily undermined the emperor's authority is because of the revival of European contact with Ethiopia. 200 years before this era, the Ethiopian emperors had blocked Portuguese Jesuits from their lands and initiated a closed-door policy towards Europe. In the era of princes, we see this change with an influx of missionaries, explorers, scientists, and precursors of colonists from Europe entering the country. Aside from Europeans, we also see Egypt taking Mezawa located in Eritrea. The Turks had occupied Eritrea for centuries, until the Egyptians defeated the Turks and took Mezawa. Both these forces, Egypt then Europe, made Mezawa the foundation for their attempts to take Ethiopian lands into their colonies. This would be resolved in Ethiopia's favor during the next century after the era of princes. All of this conflict and vying of power resulted in constant civil wars and devastated the life of the average citizen. This would continue for 86 years until the rise of Kasahailu, a rebel who would make himself Emperor Tedros II and restore the military power of the emperor. We cover Tedros's life in another episode of Humble History, and you can find that on the next video of Emperor Tedros. The era of princes was significant because it fractured the central authority of the empire and the church. This unintentionally gave way for new forms of government and unification as the era of princes ended and the country entered what historians call the modern period of Ethiopian history. Check out our playlist on Ethiopian history if you want to know more about how this time period ended and entered what historians call modern Ethiopia. That's it for today's episode of Humble History. Stay tuned for more on Minilik's reign as Emperor of Ethiopia. Please like and subscribe for more videos on African history and mythology. I'm your host Ifrata Warku, and this episode was written by Adam Salu. We'll see you on the next episode.